I want us to be practical. I, I don't want to come here and be repeating and reaction what people say about uh, government is not doing this. I want to say what government should be doing. That's being practical. The reason why I would say this government is failing is because, number one, they've not been able to check the profligacy that goes on in government in Nigeria. So what I would expect President Inubu to do and for him to be able to assure the nation that he means well for the nation, it's not about throwing money around uh, with uh, a desire to give 50,000 naira to 3 million people. 3 million people <laughs> amongst how many people? Over 200 million. It's a drop in the ocean. So I expect him to say, today, I am merging some of the ministries. As long as you meet the constitutionally required number of ministries, then cut off the rest. Number two, all these SSAs, every day, they are awarding appointments like popcorn. Like popcorn. Every day. You just remember, ah, the daughter of my friend. Aye, the son of my former school teacher. You can't run Nigeria the way you run Lagos State. In Lagos, it's just a state, and then because it's a state, a very wealthy one at that, you can afford that. But nationally, the level of poverty in Nigeria does not allow that. Then all this living large, outlandish lifestyle. You want to buy presidential jet, you want to build multi-billion around, stop it now. And we have a good and reasonable example from Kenya. When the demonstration started in Kenya, our good friend, William Ruto, thought it was the usual, they will come out for two, three days, we will suppress them. Today, is begging for oxygen. And I pray they don't drive these young Nigerians to that level, because the level of desperation is unprecedented in the country. So the president must come out. It's not a question of when I'm traveling, I will reduce my entourage to 20 people. That's nothing. Hello, good afternoon, viewers. I am Okocha P. Marcel. You see, Dende Momodu is someone that I know that is very close to Tinubu right from time. This man, despite his relationship to Tinubu, he is the only one telling Tinubu the truth. You see, when you see a politician in a place of authority, all his friends will begin to tell him lies. They won't tell him the truth. They will only tell him what will please him, what will make him to be happy. They will only tell him so that he can favor them. But the generation we are living in today in Nigeria, we need people who will be able to tell truth to power. And that is exactly what um, Chief Dende Momodo is doing. In his interview on uh, Arise News, he said that this country is failing. This government is failing already. For me, I said this government has failed because I don't have hope to, you know, to expect more of what they are going to do differently from what they have done already. So that is my sign. I want you to take your time and watch this video to the end. Thank you. So that is my reaction to that. Profligacy is key. Everything else emanates from that. When they say we don't have money, we don't have money, but they have money for politicians. Chief M.K. Abiola used to say that there is, the, there is enough for the need of every Nigerian, but there is not enough for the greed of some Nigerians. Right. Yes, then Edo State. Okay. Yes, I'm from Edo State. My father came from Yebe in all one East local government of Edo State. And now he navigated and meandered his way to Ilefe. I would not know. But he settled in Ilefe. So I was born in Ilefe. But that does not remove from the fact that I am an authentic son of Edo State. I watched my big brother yesterday, Comrade Adam Soshi Omale. I was embarrassed. I was scandalized that he was preaching division and saying because somebody cannot speak a language, if your, if your child is born in America today, automatically he gets an American passport. So the fact that Aswe Godalo is from Edo State is enough. That's all qualified. But the other qualification is that how is his background? What is his foundation? What has he contributed to nation building? Is he capable or is he incapable? Is there any reason or any scandal that will not make us to vote for him? The answer is no. This is one of the most accomplished people we have in the race today. And you, you want to just on television disqualify him because you say he can't speak a language. And it's one of the reasons anyway when people ask me, oh, why can't you contest to be governor in Edo State? I say, no, 
they will disqualify me automatically. They will say, I can't speak the language. Is there a language of Edo State? Let's even ask that. What's the language of Edo State? Uh, do we speak only one language in Edo State? When you say you can't speak his language. So for me, what Comrade did yesterday was in bad taste. He should have campaigned for their own candidate in APC. I don't have any problem with that. Campaign for him. Show us his credentials. Show us the reasons why those state must vote for him. Not on account of where you come from or the language you can speak or you can't speak. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much, um, Ari. Daily Mawodu, good to have you. Thank when you. When you were speaking about that, I was like, oh, they want to be on ovation. You promote <laughs> lavish, you know, people spending a lot of money. But of course, not, not just for politicians. Are you sure they spend a lot of money? <laughs> and maybe she didn't read my letter two weeks ago. No, I, I saw your, your <laughs> letter was trending. If you can write a letter, I don't know what the hope for, you know, Nigerians are. But in terms of the way forward for governance, you've spoken, you've not been, you've not hidden your thoughts about the way that this administration has been run and what better the president can do. Looking at the speech, he tried to highlight some of the things that his administration had done. You know, provision of CNG buses, um, expediency in the signing into law, the new minimum wage, upgrading of minimum wage to 70,000 naira from 30,000 naira, and a few other things that he had done, you know, um, agriculture and the likes. But you don't seem to have been captivated or enamored by that particular speech. Or persuaded. Or persuaded, yes, that's, that's the word. word. No. By that particular speech. What would you have wanted him to say? Number one is that finally he spoke four days into the protest. Yes. What would you have wanted him to say? I was one of those who wrote letters. Now I'm a letter writer, like uh, President uh, Lucia yeah. Bobasojo. I write letters. Because I think, I think, apart from letters getting to them one way or the other, especially open letters, uh, it also places on record that some of us are speaking of. Because tomorrow they'll say, oh, you didn't tell him. We've told him very clearly what he's doing wrong and what he needs to do right. So... Number one, I'm embarrassed. I'm scandalized that in a democracy, a president will tell us people don't have the right to protest. I told the protesters clearly that I'm not protesting because I've become a statesman. I'm an old man. I started the struggle in 1978 as a pioneer jambite at the University of Ife. So my luta has stopped. But I will protect the rights of others to also have their own no, but, he, but he didn't say people didn't have the right to no, protest. No, that's what they did. He if said they, they spent, had the right if to they wasted protest. a lot of our resources on trying to suppress, if the number of security that we, agencies that we saw in Lagos alone were sent to Sambisa, I'm sure by now maybe we would have wiped out Boko Haram. Look, we intimidate the civilians. And the reason I'm embarrassed is that we mobilized civilians against military regimes. Now they are indirectly calling on the military. That's why Atiku... Abubakar had to issue that statement two days ago that military should not go and kill innocent people on the street because now we are mobilizing military against civilians. When in our own time we were mobilizing civilians against the military. Is it not an irony? So, that's one. Number two, I expected him to do more than an apology to carry out an investigation into how peaceful protests suddenly became fisticuffs between the security guys and the protesters. Number three, I expected him to give people in concrete terms what he will do to reduce the cost of governance, which everything comes from there. Once you reduce the cost of governance, you will see that you will free enough of our resources for the general use of the general good of the general people. What areas would you want him to cost? Um, oh, I've, cost? I've told you one already. Yeah. The first is too many bloated cabinet, bloated civil service, bloated special advisors. Most of them don't even have offices. They just hang around. So if you do that, then the people will say, oh, then I, I mentioned the presidential jet thing. The man, God already blessed him with a private jet. And we, we all see what happens in other countries that we all like to quote. Oh, can't you see America? What is happening is that in Nigeria, I always say it on my program, we want to practice, pra uh, practice capitalism without capital. If you don't have capital, you can't live like an American president. What we have an American president. Okay, so a couple of things. Number one, uh, Bob D, you've always written letters. You wrote letter to Buhari, you wrote letter to all these people. But one question that, that keeps going through my mind, anytime you see uh, President Bola Metinobu is your friend, I'd like to ask, do you still have a personal relationship? No, none. When last did you message him? Maybe over three years ago. So over three years ago, you've not spoken to him again? No, not, not at all. We haven't met. I met his wife. Do you still have his number? I, I wouldn't know if it will work, but 
I, I have not bothered okay. because it's not necessary. Okay, good. Secondly, both of you were in the struggle for June 12th those days in different dimensions. You on the media front with your relationship with MKO Abiola, him also as a senator of the SDP then. The question is, what changed as regards the ideology of that struggle, do you think, in him? And where did you think he missed it? The ideology of that struggle had nothing to do with Tinubu or a political party. It was a general struggle yeah. against the military. We wanted democracy. So my relationship with him was more at the level of Nadeko. We were searching for the revalidation of the June 12 presidential election, which was annulled. So that is that. When he came back, he became governor. I had no relationship at that level. Okay. But occasionally we might meet uh, at so functions. You are, not, you are not close. To no, no, no. Politically, because I disagree vehemently, and I stated this publicly. You can fact check it uh, vehemently. When he had issues with uh, Tokumba Fikuyomi, who was one of his closest guys, I granted open interview where I said no, you can't do this. When he was having issues with Fashola, he was almost removing Fashola when he wanted second term. I wrote about their marriage. Be that they are inseparable because their marriage was made in heaven. When he had issues with Ambode, I wrote letters to him openly. So it's nothing new. I've always, when he was having problems with Saraki, he didn't want Saraki to be semi president. I wrote him, I said, no, it is unfair in a, in a, in a, in a partnership. CPC had number one, Buari. Uh, ACN had number two, Oshibajo. And then Saraki, the PDP breakaway faction, wanted number three. He said, no. Okay. You wanted someone okay. else. So, so I, I didn't really ask that because so yes. I want to clarify. So as somebody you've not talked to in three years, you're not friends. You're not in talking terms. No, no, no. Be, okay. say, so, when you say somebody is your friend, uh, a friend could be it could be anything. Okay. So, yeah. but currently you are not a chummy terms. Secondly, the no, we are fighting. Okay, when you're not fighting, but no. you've not also spoken in three years. Oh yeah, definitely. The reaction the government will always make is that people like you is because they defeated you in election, and I've seen that reaction by the likes of government agents like you, Mr. Bayan Onuga reaction to Mr. Atiku Abubakar statement and all of that, is that he defeated you in the election and he's still paying you people. That's number one. Secondly, they will also say that most of these things you're asking for them to do, that they have done it, like CNG, like uh, they say they will cultivate 10 million hectares of land and all of that. Like they say they're trying to keep it within range. In fact, they also said about uh, the fact that, you know, they've reduced uh, cost of servicing their debt and all of that. I mean, what do you say to reactions like that when they say I'm, it's because it's paying you people? I've never bothered about the comments of government agents. Never. So, they did defeat us in the election when I talked about Afikuyomi, when I talked about Fajola, when I talked about Mbode. I wasn't a member of their party. I've never been a member of their party. The thing is that in October 2022, I was interviewed on another channel, and I said it clearly, that if he wins, we are likely to have a potential dictator. Every, every newspaper cried, everybody shouted, ah, how can you say so? What I see today has justified my claim. Look, in good conscience... Is a dictator? Well, you can use any word you like, but what I is see right now, okay. a situation where people cannot protest... Bob, the, ah, we, we no. have limited time. Yes. Now, the Atiku market seems to have uh, gone down. Even some of the people in uh, the Atiku market... Uh, Leno Amokri is now uh, carrying uh, Tinubu's flag. Uh, then Bwala uh, is looking for Kokoro Tinjevo. So inside the four, he, he has moved somewhere else, but you are still uh, in the opposition. But let's talk about what and you are... opposition is not about Tiku. Like, this is what no, bothers no, no, me. No, when no, you no, reduce no. opposition that anybody who does not support Tinubu means that it's because of Tiku. I, I, I finished my job. At the article campaign okay, no, last no, no, year. My, my point you know, is, I need to clarify no, 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 no. that that I am Dele Momodu speaking as Dele Momodu as I've always spoken. Okay, uh -huh. market has ended <laughs> yes. with the uh, article. Well, I don't okay. know about which market. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, let's talk about what you are doing. Yes, I know that uh, you have some programs apart from ovation. You have built a library in Ibadan. Can you tell us about that? You know, your own philanthropy, your own program. Correct. I need to quickly add that I'm doing what I'm doing because I was radicalized by some people. Your foundation, I'm happy that Professor, uh, Prophet El Buba mentioned foundation when he was talking to you. My foundation is academic in nature. So, Wale Shoyinka 
Bola Tinubu, MK Wabiola, they all inspired us to be able to speak truth to power. And I will continue to speak truth to power, whether I retire from politics or not. So now, back to the issue of uh, the Dere Mamadou Leadership Center. About five years ago, I conceptualized the idea that, look, by the time I'm 65, I should be winding down. I don't want to be like a typical Nigerian politician who wants to be in politics forever. What can I do that will be a legacy project? So I identified it, but that has been very central to my academic life, you know, very close to IFE, very close to Lagos for Unilag and all of that. So now we've just completed it, and in the next one to two weeks, we should be able to open it for uh, people to come there. Congratulations. But thank you so much. Thank you. I know you have one. <laughs> that's one of the reasons, that's one of yeah, our connections. So you cool. know, I got the idea from Bilagio in Italy, you know, and what is it? I have four bedrooms, almost a five-star status, where you apply. It's strictly by invitation or application. So you apply, you come, you want to do your research work, and we provide a five-star environment for you. And at no cost. So it's under the Daily Momodu Foundation. So for me, that's what most politicians should be doing. The reason why you see all these jobbers in Abuja, I've only been to Abuja once this year, which was last week, and I went for a ceremony. Nothing, you know. So let our politicians begin to have jobs that they do. It, and when you talk about Atiku again, I'll go back to him. It's one of the reasons I respect him. He doesn't have a state he controls in the whole of Nigeria, not one. And the man is managing himself, managing his family. Politicians should rely less on the business of politics. Well, thank you very much, uh, Bashan Daily Mamadou, for joining us on the morning show. Mm. And all the best with the Daily Mamadou uh, Learning uh, Center. Thank uh, you. Which is